Okay. Welcome everybody for our um, uh, weekly seminar at the Department of Marine Geosciences. Um, today we are hosting uh, Dr. Alessandra Savini from um, the University of Milano Biococca. Um, Dr. Alessandra Savini is an associate professor at the University of Milano Biococca in Italy at the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences. Uh, where she teaches in productory courses in submarine geomorphology. She is a marine geoscientist with expertise in seafloor imaging and mapping using geophysical data, mainly the symmetry, backscattering, backscattering and seismics, and RGB still images and videos. She investigates the interaction between submarine geomorphic uh, processes and benthic organisms over long and short time scales. Emphasis is given to marine bioconstructions from cold water and tropical corals and cold deep systems to decipher the response of biogenic submarine landforms and associated landscapes to Pleistocene and Holocene climate changes. She has contributed to the development of uh, advanced research methods for geoacoustic seabed characterization and geospatial analysis applied to benthic habitat mapping in complex deep sea environments cold water core settings and cold sea systems mainly, and shallow tropical coral systems as well. Her applied research focuses on the monitoring and assessment of anthropogenic impacts in the marine environment based on the application of innovative techniques for quantitative analysis of acoustic and optical remote sensing data and a deep learning and object-based image analysis. She participates also as leader and co-leader in numerous national and EU funded projects, taking part in more than 30 oceanographic surveys in the Mediterranean Sea and Atlantic, as well as in the Indian and Arctic Oceans. In fact, leading eight in the Mediterranean Basin itself. She is a member of the Submarine Geomorphology Working Group, which is established under the flag of the International Association of Geomorphologists, whose activity has made a significant contribution to the establishment of submarine geomorphology as a scientific discipline. She is a member of the scientific com committee of Mare Center, which is located in the Maldives, as you heard before, where she coordinates the annual training course on mapping technologies in coral reef environments. So today, Dr. Savini is going to talk about coupling optical and acoustic remote sensing techniques in coral reef environments for geomorphological studies. I hope I didn't forget anything. And I remind everybody, <laughs> I remind everybody that you can ask questions at the end and also in the chat. Okay, so the podium is yours, Alessandra. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Nicholas, for your introduction. So I go through the topic. And so we will see basically um, the topic will deal with the techniques that we can use to map uh, coral reef environments and the integration that um, occurred recently between satellites uh, or optical uh, remote sensing and acoustic remote sensing. So uh, the, the presentation is structured in three main um, blocks uh, and I have a background uh, on geomorphology of coral reefs just to um, give basic information of uh, uh, the, what we mean with the different geomorphological, um, sorry, the, with the different typology of coral reef, of coral reef that uh, are spread in our ocean environment. And uh, um, also to give you an um, indication about uh, the scale of observation uh, that you can use and describe in this kind of uh, environment. Then we will have a look at the geomorphology of atolls in general, and in particular to the Maldivian archipelago. Um, because it's from this region that uh, our research team here in Milan collected data and uh, we are developing a project in order to map uh, the atolls of the Maldives and we, I will show you some uh, uh, recent results that we get from this area, uh, specifically regarding also the integration of uh, remote sensing data and seafloor mapping data. And please, Note the question if I say something that is not in your background. And uh, in, in the meanwhile, I also 
uh, apologize if I will say many things that you already know. By the way, um, I will start to just list uh, uh, some very important topic regarding the coral reefs. Uh, every one of us uh, for sure know that are the most biologically diverse ecosystem in our um, oceanic environment. And for this reason, they underpin a range of ecosystem goods and services that contribute to the well-being of millions of people just into fishery or food, uh, tourism, uh, many, many services that uh, allow our, our social and economic life. And, uh, um, but recently, uh, the problem is that there is a, a very great uncertainty surrounding the future of coral reefs uh, in our Anthropocene here, because uh, uh, especially for the increase in carbon dioxide that is affecting our atmosphere, there are many threats that are, um, uh, that are pressing coral reefs uh, ecosystem and uh, in particular the warming of the ocean because they experience bleaching if uh, the water get too warm and the sea level rise that uh, uh, is a consequence of the uh, increasing in temperature of our oceanic environment and uh, sea level rise do not cause only erosion of coral reef system but they also it is also something that can make disappear some low-lying highlands that uh, are formed in coral atolls, for example, no? And all these uh, uh, changes uh, um, in the, due to the change in climatic condition um, cause also changes in storm partner or in precipitation or uh, in the dynamic of the ocean currents and all these uh, phenomena can cause uh, many um, threats for coral reefs uh, because, uh, um, for example, they can be more vulnerable to storms uh, uh, or to the sedimentary input that uh, can come from the mainland uh, or uh, um, the dispersal of the larvae can be altered uh, or the connectivity between uh, species can change uh, with uh, the alteration of ocean currents uh, and, and so on. And, Finally, for sure, the acidification of our ocean because they are made by carbonates and so the capacity to calcify obviously is uh, uh, compromised by the uh, increase in, C in carbon dioxide and with the consequent, uh, cons with the associated uh, increase in uh, pH. So uh, all these problems for sure are a basic uh, um, issue for uh, many marine ecologists, but also geomorphologists uh, deals a lot with uh, um, coral reefs because coral reefs are bioconstruction, so they form a three-dimensional geomorphic features in our uh, marine environment. And they also develop it over um, long geological time scales uh, through the complex process of accretion. As you know, you, they can form um, very impressive uh, um, formation and landforms along our coast. And uh, the, um, this kind of uh, uh, formation basically provoke uh, uh, not only sedimentary landforms, but uh, also the, um, they, they, <laughs> sorry, this, um, the role of coral reefs is also important for the total carbonate budget because they are seen for uh, um, for carbonate, and so they have a very big implication in uh, all models related to the quantification of uh, and the dynamic of uh, carbonate uh, in our health system. They are subject to many change during their life, and uh, the change that can affect uh, uh, landforms and sedimentary environment associated to coral reef can occur on multiple temporal and special scales. And according to this change, they actually show a very high morphological variability. So basically study the landforms and the, geomorph um, the geomorphological characteristic of uh, the coral reef structures can give us uh, a lot of information regarding how tectonic works, climate, sea level, and the multitude of, obviously of uh, ecological processes in our marine environment. So they are, a big topic, they represent a big topic, not only for ecologists, but also for geomorphologists and especially geomorphologists interested in uh, climate changes. 
because their changes actually reflect, uh, is a response to the environmental or climatic change that uh, occur on our health system. One particular aspect related to the structure formed by uh, coral reefs is they interact directly with the circulation factor, and so they, they are very important to reduce shoreline erosion and protect beach, and so they also have a, um, a sort of a very strong applied value in geomorphological research. Um, historically, there is a, a classification of uh, uh, three main, three, four main types of uh, coral reefs. This classification actually followed the first theory of Darwin that uh, explained the formation of atoll, um, explaining that uh, at the beginning you have a reef around the volcanic islands, then uh, uh, this reef, which is close to the mainland of the volcanic islands, develop but with the subsidence of the uh, volcanic islands it develops vertically and uh, with time it will become what we call a barrier reef so when a reef is attached to the mainland and the mainland can be a continent or a volcanic land then we call it fringing reef when uh, it is separated from the mainland by a lagoon system we can call it barrier reef, and within the lagoon system, there are patch reef or platform beams can also occur, which are more or less isolated, and they can also be present in some region without a true barrier reef that create a, a lagoon, but they are on the continental shelf. And then uh, if we are talking about uh, a fringing reef that evolved around the volcanic islands and the volcanic islands became totally submerged because of uh, subsidence, we, you have the formation of atoll. And this is the explanation of Darwin to, um, that, that, uh, um, to explain the uh, evolution uh, of an atoll, how we uh, have an atoll today. The main difference that uh, is still useful from this classification, uh, I guess, is for sure the point that uh, an atoll uh, is a carbonate system that is totally separated from the mainland. Uh, there are no important uh, terrigenous input uh, in all the carbonatic system. While if you have a barrier system or a fringing reef uh, or platform reefs on the continental shelf, uh, for sure you have uh, to deal also with the sedimentary input. This could be important, for example, if there are um, changes in precipitation and in sedimentary input from land that can alter the uh, equilibrium of uh, reef grow or can uh, uh, disturb uh, actually the formation of uh, reef is the sedimentary, uh, the terrigenous sediment uh, is um, the input from terrigenous sediment is too high. By the way, uh, this classification, as I told you, is quite old because at the end there are many uh, reef types that are in the middle between these three main and members that are uh, defined by the fringing reef, the barrier reef, and the atoll. And um, but this was due basically because at the beginning we had only navigation at the beginning of the research in coral reef topics. Um, Darwin was. Whoop, I heard something. Darwin was uh, um, one of the main scientists that um, put the base also of uh, the discipline of biology, for example. There's a strong noise in the... Okay, stop. And um, I was telling that Darwin was important because he basically uh, established the base of geobiology and uh, coral reefs are one of the main topic of... Uh, uh, the geo the, of geobiology, but then uh, as soon as we started to collect data, not only sailing around the sea, but even looking at our Earth system from satellite, because in many cases this kind of system are located in remote regions, so they are very difficult to explore directly. Only people that live close to them can actually have the opportunity to collect field data and. Uh, uh, observe direct uh, um, the direct evolution or changing patterns uh, of uh, uh, this kind of system. But now we have the opportunity to use satellite data that can survey the health system continuously every day. And so we recognize actually just from the 
the large scale morphological uh, uh, characteristic of this coral field that there are many types. It's not always simple to distinguish a barrier reef from a fringing reef, for example. The extension of the lagoon system can be different, and there are half at all of many different shapes actually that can be described. So this classification is old, but is old uh, because of the methods. Now we have more methods to investigate this uh, system, but at the end, it's still in use just because it's quite useful. When you are looking at a reef, uh, when you are start to study this kind of environment, you basically start from this classification. No? And uh, with time, obviously, uh, with the increasing of our knowledge regarding this system, many authors provided many other classification systems, more detailed, they distinguish a lot of future in the reef structure. And now we, we cannot, we do not have the time to see them in detail, but I reported here the, the most known, on the, or at least the one that I know, but the significance, the, the meaning of uh, the many classification system that we have, I think uh, rely on the point that uh, we still do not know enough about coral reefs and uh, uh, why we find actually a lot of uh, uh, differences between one reef and another one according to the circulation partners, uh, the oceanographic partner, the dynamic of waves, uh, the climatic condition that uh, even for a few degrees can change, or the point that it can be uh, subject to storm condition, for example, hurricane or not. Uh, some of them are more protected, some other not. Some of them are in subsidence, some other are in uplift. Uh, and so there are many, many situation, environmental condition that can actually affect uh, the uh, external shape and the type uh, in terms of morphology of uh, reefs. And here we were talking about uh, the general um, morphology of uh, the, the coral reef types. And so we can talk about the coral reef scale. No? This is a picture that is published on a nice of a big book, which is the Encyclopedia of Modern Coral Reef from Springer. I think that recently they published maybe a new version, but I still have the whole version, but it collects a lot of information from uh, uh, this kind of system. And Andre Fue was uh, uh, is one of the main scientists involved in the um, mapping, I would say, and the character geomorphological characterization of the system, and developed one of the last specifications that I mentioned here, providing also this Millennium Coral Reef Mapping Project, in which it provided the new terminology and the very rich, actually, terminology that you can use to describe not only the different kind of reefs, but even the singular elements that uh, uh, compose uh, the entire coral reef system, because when we talk about atoll, barrier reef, or fringing reef, we are talking at the reef type scale, I would say. But if you go deep in detail with the characterization of the geomorphological uh, components of uh, the, the, the reef itself, you can distinguish other regions. And uh, there are three main morphological elements that can characterize any reef, I would say, uh, which are the four reef, which is the region that uh, is uh, basically is uh, in communication, direct communication with the open ocean and include the reef front and the reef slope. Then we have the reef crest, which is the most energetic zone. This is the area. Mm -hmm. This is the, the zonation in all the three main type, fringing reef, barrier reef with the lagoon, and the atoll, but in all of them, you have this four reef, the reef crest, which is the region that is subject, um, that is affected by the breaking of the wave. So it's the most energetic region of uh, uh, the world, the entire reef. And then you have uh, a back reef region without the lagoon system on a fringing reef, while on the fringing reef, you also have the lagoon in the back reef region. And the lagoon system in the atoll is within the atoll itself. So it seems you, you can even consider, morphologically speaking, the atoll as a barrier reef, as a circular barrier reef that is not connected to the land system, but as a lagoon system in the, in the center. 
And the most interesting future of uh, um, aspect of this um, coral reef system is that uh, uh, the internal pattern or reef communities, there are many corals that uh, form a coral reefs. And all these coral can grow with different shapes. But at the end, the shapes that uh, each coral uh, uh, the chain is controlled by, uh, especially by the oceanographic pattern, but by the amount of uh, sediment that arrive on the system and by the amount of uh, illumination. And so you can, within the three main uh, region, you can even distinguish peculiar association of uh, different coral growth form. So you see here, there are many growth forms from massive to branching coral to tabular coral. Each form is uh, determined by the kind of uh, sedimentary input you have, uh, the uh, amount of light that arrive on the seafloor or uh, the, um, the, the, hydrodynamic, uh, the hydrodynamism of uh, the environment. For example, you will not find fragile branching coral on the reef crest where you have uh, the waves that are uh, breaking um, against the reef. Uh, maybe the, um, the branching, the fragile branching coral will be more on the reef flat, which is the uh, less energetic environment of the whole reef system. And so here yeah, I just put some example to explain. The, the, here is an example of massive form that can resist even uh, uh, with high hydrodynamic condition. And here is a, some example of tabular reef that develop to um, exploit as a, at the maximum the light that is coming uh, from the oh, no, sorry <laughs> is coming from uh, the sun and other kind of uh, ramification massive uh, ramification uh, or there are many type of uh, tabular forms uh, and many type of branching corals but. All these uh, typology of single colonies of corals uh, um, are located in the uh, environment according to the environmental variables that uh, are found. So from the scale of a single colony to the scale of the big reef, you can actually uh, find a very high morphological variation in uh, coral reefs. And the point is that do not, uh, um, the, the point is that the, all this uh, uh, morphological variability is not disconnected. I mean, at the end, uh, the assembly of uh, the assemblage of uh, uh, different growth form of coral will determine uh, a particular kind of fall reef or the extension of the flat reef or a differentiation within uh, the back reef in different regions and basically will tell you something. But we still do not know the exact connection between assemblages of different growth form and the final architecture of the corals. Now we will see, I put some slides just to show um, some detailed information regarding atolls among the, this uh, big kind of uh, uh, coral reef system. And here I found a map uh, that was provided by Darwin in uh, 1842. And this is the map uh, representing the distribution of coral atolls and some uh, other kind of um, coral reefs. And the map was provided by Darwin only sailing the ocean, basically. No? Now, we, uh, as I told you before, we have the opportunity to use satellite data. And so our map are more precise. And um, so the present day knowledge of glob on global distribution of coral reefs, uh, atolls uh, included, is now obtained by remote sensing technology. And the uh, link actually between uh, remote sensing technology and the study of coral link of coral reefs uh, is very strong. Uh, and there are a lot of papers, but uh, I reported here some very recent good review, in particular in the one of Perkins. Uh, in 2018, and uh, in which you can find uh, all the information regarding the um, how remote sensing helped a lot to understand the functioning of uh, the system. The um, data from remote sensing obviously is not also used for uh, 
uh, determine the shape uh, or the general morphology of a coral reef system, but uh, because of multispectral data, thermal data, and all the other information that uh, satellite remote sensing can give you, the ocean color and so on, you can actually uh, include many ecological study uh, by the use of uh, remote sensing images, satellite images. And um, so we uh, now um, cannot see every aspect in detail, but I report, as I told you, I reported here the main literature that you um, can find on the topic. There are many, many papers, but I suggest these are the, 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 the recent, the more recent review. Even because satellites change it with time. So at the beginning, we had some time of satellites and some type of sensor. Now sensors are new, and so that's why is uh, uh, basically useful uh, look at the recent uh, uh, literature on this topic. So let's see how uh, we can describe an atoll, uh, this kind of uh, coral reef system. The atolls are defined as annular or ring-shaped mid-ocean reefs extending around a lagoon. And within the lagoon, you do not have a central highlands. Obviously, with islands here, we mean continental highlands. So an island with um, a different uh, rocky formation, not the small carbonate islands that are formed on the reef itself or in the middle of the atoll sometimes for some atolls, as we will see for the Maldives, for example. So if you have islands formed by Carbonate sand obviously is an island that is a part of the reef and because the capacity of these uh, uh, organisms is not only provide reefs uh, by construction in the marine environment, but since they provide a lot of uh, carbonatic sediment and, um, and also with the contribution of other organisms with them, basically there is a lot of sand, a lot of sediment and according to the interaction with the oceanographic parameters, waves and circulation partners, many highlands can act at the end uh, be formed on the main rim that form the reef. This, can, this is a thing that can happen on uh, Hattel, but also on uh, barrier reefs. So the, the main reef, uh, the, the reef that depicts the, the atoll is also called reef rim, and the reef rim uh, supports isolated or near continuous reef islands that uh, are composed of unlitified or poorly consolidated sand or gravel. The atoll can vary a lot in shape. They can be continuous with only one passage that is called pass, as we will see, or they can be as in this case, uh, uh, characterized by many pests. Pests pass, uh, are an uh, uh, interruption of uh, the continuity of the rim, but they are very critical because they uh, allow basically the exchange between the internal lagunal water with the oceanic water. And more is the ex exchange between these two environment and higher it seems to be the variability also of the lagunal environment because there are many other smaller patch reef for example in the lagunal system in particular where there is a, a very big uh, uh, interaction between oceanic water and lagunal water but uh, as i told you before even in this case uh, um, i just report here some uh, um, aspect that you can take into consideration to describe uh, the general morphology of an atoll, so the continuity of the reef, the presence of reef islands, the presence the number of passes, and what you can find within the lagoon. But at the end, we still do not have a very comprehensive classification of all kinds of atolls. We just have a description of many of them that is increasing with the increase of our knowledge of this system. And uh, here an example, some example of different type of atoll. You see that the inner lagoon can be very different. In general, when you have only one pass and when the pass is very shallow, 
the lagoon start to be filled. And so the destiny, the fate of the atoll will be to become a platform actually and not truly an atoll. An atoll is when you have an, a lagoonal system in the middle, in the center, sorry. And here the main um, elements that uh, um, describe the variability of uh, the different atolls. So we have the reef rim over which you can have a variable number of uh, highlands, of coral islands. The outer reef, okay, as in the other type uh, of reef, and the lagoonal system. There are many studies which are uh, investigating, uh, uh, as I told you, the variability of uh, this system. But one thing that I want you to um, that I want to highlight is that, on the contrary, than uh, other region, when you deal with a atoll. And with, uh, and with islands of the atolls, you have always to consider that these islands are created by the coral reef itself, okay? And the altitude of these islands uh, mm -hmm. cannot be too high. I mean, uh, in many cases, uh, um, all these atolls formed on volcanic islands. This is true. And so the region in many cases is in substance. And when you have a high stand sea level, it seems that these islands is uh, uh, the result of the capacity of the reef to um, stay, to, to catch up, we say, with the sea level. But the altitude could not be higher than a few meters. And so an increase in sea level uh, can be um, a trick for this kind of uh, um, coral highlands, and there are many countries that actually are entirely formed by coral islands, for example, Maldives. So one of the main concerns for Maldives Maldive is uh, if the present day rising in sea level is actually a, a serious uh, um, phenomena that they have to address. Uh, with this time of climate change. What I can say now uh, is that uh, actually the reefs, uh, the coral reefs always demonstrated to be able to catch up to, uh, with the rising in sea level. They were always present uh, during the quaternary uh, with all the changes we have uh, in sea level. But the problem now is that the trees that now are facing coral reefs uh, due to the uh, fast increase in carbon dioxide is the first time that they are experiencing this kind of uh, um, change in environment. Before the change, the changes were uh, slower and maybe they had time to uh, give the right response to the changing condition, the, the changing condition. Now we actually do not know which is uh, uh, the resilience of this system if they are really able to uh, catch up to, to the present day uh, rate of sea level that still actually we do not know. So we know that uh, we are uh, experiencing a sea level, uh, a rising in the sea level, but we actually um, can just provide model and scenario. We do not know which is our future in this regard, but for sure is a problem for many countries that uh, are totally um, organized in this way. For example, Maldives. These are called low-lying highlands. And many of them are inhabited highlands, such as in the case of Maldives. The Maldives are represented by a partially double chain of coral atoll reefs. You see here a map of Maldives. These yellow polygons represent the atolls composing the uh, Maldivian archipelago. And you see that in the main part, you have a double chain. Only the southern part and the most northern part are provided by only one atoll. And this uh, uh, configuration also um, determines the, uh, the presence of this inner sea, which is separated by the external Ocean, Indian Ocean. The uh, extension from north to south of uh, uh, the Maldivian archipelago is 868 kilometers. And the southernmost uh, atoll is uh, Adu, as is uh, very slightly south to the equator. 
and it composed more than 2,000 reefs, all the atolls. Of. We have uh, 21 atolls, but uh, we have reefs that are composing these uh, atolls. If you have a look at the single atolls, you say this is an example of uh, the Tafu atoll located here, just uh, southwest to the um, atoll in which uh, uh, there is Male, which is the capital of uh, Maldivian Republic. And um, you see the uh, general configuration of Maldivian atoll is that you have an external rim, a more or less circular rim, very deeply interrupted by passes. Okay, there are many, many passes here in this case. And the internal lagoon also is uh, uh, characterized by the presence of many patch reef. This is Magudo Highland in the southern part of Fafu Atoll where we have our research center that I mentioned the, before uh, the beginning of this, um, uh, this presentation. In general, uh, all uh, uh, the atoll of uh, Maldives are typically open, so they have a lot of uh, passes, and the islands can occupy both the margin of uh, uh, the reef that are located on the margin of the atoll, but also some patch reefs that develop inside the lagoon. So we can have islands in the central lagoon or in the main, um, in the reefs that are composing the rim of the atoll. And as you can see from this picture, even the dimension of uh, the pass can be different. We can have narrow or larger pass. And what I can also say is that we do not know anything regarding the seafloor. The mapping of the seafloor with multi-beam system, for example, started very recently in this uh, region. And we uh, still have very few data that are characterizing, as we will see, the seafloor of uh, the lagoon system. If we uh, do a cross section along the Maldivian archipelago, as I told you before, in the middle of the two chain of atoll, we can distinguish the seafloor uh, depicting the inner sea. And the depth is no more than 400, 500 meters, more or less. In average, I remember something like 300 and something. And on the external part, you have uh, the Indian Ocean. So in this case, for example, you have uh, the, the section crossed this Ariatol toward the west. And is in, in this other case, the section crossed the Felidu Atoll located here. And in the middle, you have uh, the inner sea. And here you have also the dimension, the, the dimension of the atolls. Uh, they are uh, some decades of kilometers uh, larger from 20 to 30 in general uh, and long because they are more or less subcircular. There are some atolls that are longer than other and they uh, prefer to be elongated along the axis uh, of their uh, um, distribution. They prefer to be more elongated north to south and uh, east uh, uh, to west, uh, for sure. And there's a reason for that, as we will see. And this is a section of uh, uh, the Maldivian platform, because actually I not have the time here, but uh, as soon as we started to collect data, in particular when we started to drill, uh, when scientists sorry, started to drill uh, the Maldivian um, coral reefs, they recognize that actually the um, Maldivian archipelago is more a coral platform than coral atoll. At the end, the edge of the platform has these peculiar atolls because uh, they are formed by circular barrier, uh, by circular rim, by circular reefs interrupted by passes, but many sedimentologists used to um, call Maldivian reefs as uh, uh, reef platforms. And if you have a look uh, again with a higher detail to a single atoll, so this can be um, one section, um, a section of uh, a part of an atoll. Imagine that uh, is, uh, sorry, not this, this part. You can distinguish the 
uh, reef front that uh, is uh, in connection the outer reef slope of the reef front that is in connection with the open ocean. Then we have uh, the uh, main rim in which you can have or not an island. And then you have the Laguna system within the atoll. And within the lagoon, you can have other uh, coral reef landforms, such as in particular for this region, uh, uh, local people recognize Faru, which are annular reef that uh, uh, can be compared to very, very small atoll. So I mean, you have a circular small reef with an internal lagoon again. So it's a quite a fractal um, behavior of uh, Maldivian atolls in the, from this point of view. But you can even have some other uh, minor reefs or minor reef land landforms such as uh, the Giri, such as in this case, or the Tila. Gira and Tili are named used by Maldivian people to indicate this pinnacle within the lagoon. The Giri is uh, uh, normally is uh, reach uh, the, the sea level or it is at uh, no more than five meters of uh, depth, while the Tila can uh, uh, be considered a pinnacle on the seafloor that um, do not reach uh, basically the sea level. And so they cannot be seen by a satellite image, such as in this case. No? In the satellite image, you can only distinguish here, but not the Tila. But they are both pinnacle. The only difference is the depth uh, that they can reach uh, to uh, the sea level. And one particular thing that, uh, or morphological features that are located on the outer reef are the terraces and the caves. All these morphological features basically uh, document what all the uh, position of former sea level. And so they are deeply studied recently, they have been deeply studied recently to determine the um, range of uh, sea level change that affected the Maldivian islands. Here is a one of the oldest representation of uh, a section on the um, coral atoll provided by Cerepica and Passeri that were two Italians that started to uh, study Maldivian atoll from a sedimentological point of view, but I reported here just to um, this, this section from uh, the paper, just to uh, make you aware then, uh, even if we started to mention, sorry, I go a little bit, okay, these three main elements that compose the single reef, then in each of these elements, you can recognize and distinguish other morphological future. And according to the point that you are in a natal reef or in a fringing reef or in a barrier reef, you can um, add this kind of, uh, some kind of adjective to indicate where you are, okay? Uh, for example, in this case, they use uh, marginal faro or lagoon uh, that are uh, faro, for example, is a, a term that is specifically used in the Maldivian region. But here yeah, is just to report how can be uh, differentiated also with the terminology, the uh, different morphological features that characterize an atoll and in particular the Maldivian atoll. Before I show you this reef, which was uh, the um, Fafu reef, but uh, um, here, I took another reef in the north, which is very similar to Fafu. So as I told you before, uh, there are a number of passes and a lot of uh, patch reef, Faro, Tila, Giri within the lagoon. But here to the south, as soon as you go out from the region in which you have this double chain of atoll, you find different atoll. So, I mean, in this case, uh, the rim seems to be very continuous. And we have uh, in Lamu Atoll to the south uh, only two passes. Why? Because actually the point of having two chain uh, is because in this region, we are experiencing the, uh, the action of monsoon. And so we have six months uh, of wind that arrive from Northeast and uh, northeast in um, in the winter, 
and the six months in the summer in which we have winds and currents and waves that arrive from southwest. And this changing condition in the oceanographic pattern actually affect a lot of the shape and the morphological aspect of uh, the coral atoll of Maldives. And as soon as you go out of this situation, basically what happened here? It happened that, for example, the North Male or the Hari Atoll, they experience strong wave condition only during six months. During the other months, they are totally protected by the other chain and the inner sea. While if you are here for all the year, you are under the um, action of uh, strong waves because uh, of the winds that are coming from northeast or from southeast. So there are no months in which you are protected. And so you need to be stronger, basically. So that's why a continuous reef is also something stronger than a reef like that. A reef like that can be, uh, can survive, <laughs> I, I would say, because it is protected also by the other chain of uh, atoll. And what happened if you look at the morphological uh, characteristic of the reefs uh, of the atoll uh, along our cross section? That uh, here within the inner sea, you have more, ca more calm condition, calmer condition of. Uh, the, um, the sea, because uh, you, have, you have the protection of the reef. Toward the east, you can have uh, um, strong waves, but only during six months. The same for the other side. And it is only on the external side of this atoll that you can find longer reef. I mean, if you are in the south, uh, all the reefs uh, uh, present uh, a continuous rim with very few passes. If you are in the center, the reef rim is interrupted by passes, but uh, the external part, uh, such as in this case, the external part, part is characterized by longer reef, while the internal part uh, toward the inner sea is characterized by very small, by very small reefs. So this is something that explains how these uh, um, reefs really uh, shape themselves according to the oceanographic pattern and the environmental condition. For Maldivian region, they are in subsidence, there are no sedimentary inputs. So the main variable that control the formation is really the oceanographic condition. But let's have a closer look at the atolls and the islands of the atoll, this is, this is our highlands, the Magudu highlands that I mentioned before. And this is a view taken with drones and with these unmanned IRL vehicles that are, that are now extensively used to map uh, uh, coral reef system. This is an example of a lagoonal reef island. So an island that is located within the lagoon while Magudu is on the external rim. And let's have a look also at the uh, association that you have. You can I just put some example with because we do not have uh, uh, so much time. But as I told you before, the association of the growth form change according to the point that you are on the reef flat or on the reef slope. And uh, um, on the reef slope, for example, we uh, documented each year uh, until 2020 the situation in our uh, in the reef of uh, the Magudu Highlands uh, in the Fafu Atoll. And after 2016, actually, we found a very uh, compromised situation because uh, even in the Maldives, but also in many other parts, uh, um, in many other reefs of our, of our health system, there was a very strong bleaching event that destroyed a lot of the Great Barrier Reef. But even in the Maldives, we have uh, uh, many um, compromised situation. And this is an example of uh, the same part uh, of uh, the reef slope of, an, of a lagoonal highlands you see here. And after the bleaching event, basically all the living corals uh, were quite uh, uh, disappeared. 
they, uh, as soon as they die because of the bleaching event, they uh, are more fragile and they can be break by, uh, broken by the waves. After some year, we observe new colonies that uh, started again to, um, to grow. For example, here, these are new colonies and yeah, the, the, the edge, uh, the, the top of the branching coral that uh, restarted to, to grow. But there are other important issues, for example, the physical damage provided by tourism or mining activity and uh, unfortunate, unfortunately plastic also is a very big issue in Maldives because they are in the middle of the Indian Ocean and all the plastic in the ocean sooner or later will find the islands and the reefs and will accumulate. And so we have a very big accumulation, for example, on desert islands because there are no people that are cleaning the islands. And so this is a um, important point to address if you want to manage Maldivian atolls. But the first step to manage Maldivian atolls is to map them correctly or accurately. And what I would like to say is actually that uh, um, it is very challenging to map a Maldivian atoll for many reasons. One reason is that uh, um, they are very spread over a large area. And the nautical chart that we have uh, are very old, actually, but uh, uh, it is very difficult to keep them updated because uh, these islands are moving a lot. They are very dynamic. And the, another point is also that uh, people uh, in Maldives and in many other regions uh, provide land reclamation. And so they actually add land. And every year there is new land because of land reclamation. And these are just some example of transformation of uh, uh, Maldivian highlands uh, with time because of industrial development, uh, because of uh, need uh, of place for uh, vast disposal and, uh, and so on. And so we actually need, even for this reason, to monitor this kind of uh, environment continuously, but the point is uh, quite challenging. And what we can do to map this region that uh, include the deeper region and very shallow region is to combine different methods. Uh, this is the key point. Uh, and so we, for sure, we have to use satellite, but we have to use also uh, drones and the uh, uh, traditional acoustic mapping system and direct observation, even with IROV and not only with uh, scuba diving. And so, here just uh, um, the indication that uh, for uh, using the multi-beam system, uh, obviously you also need to orient the uh, SWOT of the system to uh, the, um, the reef slope. So you have to take care of many aspects. We started to map actually the um, islands in Maldives and in particular in Fafu Atoll, uh, our first step was to map uh, the emerged part. So uh, using satellite data, uh, we mapped all the islands and we provided the land use and land cover um, of the Republic of uh, the Maldives. And we analyzed the change in the use of the land during time. Uh, this was quite a big work that we did, but uh, was helpful to um, stress uh, or to highlight that there was uh, a very big increase in land uh, reclamation and a loss of uh, vegetated surface during, uh, especially because of deterioration of uh, um, into anthropogenic semi-natural area of uh, many regions. But this was for the emerged part. Then we started to observe the and to observe the submerged part, still with satellite. And we started to provide the classical habitat map. And we use for this a Sentinel and the rapid eye data, which have a resolution of from five to 10 meters. And we actually detect some change in the composition of the main biosedimentological characteristic of the reef system. So we actually see with time, a decrease uh, in the coral reef flat, the, the, the corals composing the coral reef flat area with an increase of the coral pavement. The coral pavement is basically the rockstone, is uh, uh, the carbonatic rock without coral. So, 
And then we provided with the use of the satellite data, the general habitat map of the FAFU atoll, which is at the atoll scale, recognizing all the geomorphic features that were identified in the um, terminology that I mentioned before, provided by Andre Fouillet. And what we are doing now, even if it's very challenging and we still do not get a very nice um, result, I mean accurate, uh, but we are, the work is in progress and it's in progress for many region, uh, for many shallow region uh, characterized by the presence of coral reef is to use satellite to get bathymetry. It is called satellite derived bathymetry. It's a work in progress because of the accuracy of the data that we get, but we get something. The data are still not published, but uh, uh, we are working on that uh, basically because we want to merge this kind of information that uh, uh, is very helpful to have uh, uh, the bathymetry of a very shallow region and combine this information with the information that we can collect with the multibin system, for example. But before doing that, we also uh, try to exploit uh, as, best, as, best, as best as we can the drone data. With the drone, with the drone data, we basically uh, started to look at the anthropogenic impact on some islands and to look at the substrate change in the tail. And here I just report very few information. There are papers that you can detect on the, on the web, and there are many other paper with the same approach because the uh, drones actually give you a very high resolution. And with deep learning processes uh, and uh, some other algorithms that are called object-based image analysis, you can actually select what, what you want from the image and provide an automatic classification of object. This was what we did with the plastic, for example. And so we quantify the amount of plastic spread on some highlands and we develop a protocol to do that. But we also had a look at the substrate in the tail uh, after the bleaching event that I mentioned before. And we actually detect uh, some changes. In particular, we obtained a very high DTM from uh, the drone images applying what we what is what is called structure from motion is a sort of uh, photogrammetric techniques. So basically from the image, you obtain a, um, a DTM, a digital terrain model, a 3D model. And from our 3D model, we developed uh, some uh, morphometric analysis. So we basically extracted the rugosity mm, of the 3D model that we obtained. And we actually recognize uh, a uh, um, a sort of decrease in rugosity, which is, uh, that can be interpreted. You can see here that the rugosity is higher than here and with colors is uh, more simple to detect the difference between the two years. And this means that uh, the uh, structural complexity of the coral system is decreasing and the structural complexity is actually an index of biodiversity. So a decrease, the complexity means a decrease in biodiversity. So this is just a way that you can have uh, to uh, monitor this kind of environment. What we did with the acoustic system is to start to map the reef, and then we have to leave uh, the, uh, this project because of the COVID. We started in 2019, and we hope to uh, start again uh, this project to map the deeper region in the next year, in 2022. But uh, uh, what is nice, what we are trying to do now, as I told you before, is to combine the shallow bathymetry with the multi-beam bathymetry in order to obtain what is called the seamless DTM of all the reef system. This is uh, just our starting point, what uh, we hope to go on this uh, uh, line and to get a uh, nice result in order to have not only habitat map, such as in this case, but uh, to monitor uh, and to have the accuracy, the, the proper accuracy to monitor all the changes in this environment. So this is this was our approach. And I have to mention that very recently in August, there was the publication of a nice paper on nature that basically use the same approach because it is recognized that if you want to map a region which is shallow and deep, you have to combine many methods. 
And uh, so there is this uh, very uh, multi-source and multi-scale approach in mapping this kind of region. But uh, um, after the mapping, you also need uh, the proper classification and the proper terminology to uh, describe what there is uh, in uh, your region. And I have to say that this paper from Kennedy that has been recently published contain a very huge information that uh, helped to clarify which is the right approach to determine the different kind of uh, um, morphology or geomorphic zone or benthic assemblage and all the relationship between them that you can find in this kind of system. So I finish, sorry if I took a long time, uh, more than I thought, maybe too many slides. But at the end, so what with all this uh, uh, information? Uh, what I would like, what to me, the, the take home message, I would say, is that uh, all of us are now know that uh, we have the technology to obtain uh, what we can say a seamless DTM, no? something like that. A DTM that is able to represent very shallow region to deeper region. And most importantly, to map the deeper region, because actually uh, the deeper region is something that uh, are still not so uh, well described in this kind of system, because traditionally they uh, were always studied by remote sensing technology, satellite remote sensing technology. And we are starting right now to combine the deeper information with the shallower information. And I guess that this is a very new synoptic view. At the beginning, researchers started to say the satellite give a synoptic view of coral reef system. I guess that with the combination of uh, multi-beam data and acoustic data, we have a, a true new synoptic view because the reef can be also deep. And there are mesophotic reef. There are many other things that we do not know actually for the deep region. I forgot to mention, for example, here in this slide, you see that there are many uh, smaller mount knolls or patch reef that uh, were not detected from uh, the satellite image and that clearly define the distribution of sediment and the dynamic, the sedimentary dynamic in this uh, environment. And so uh, all these data have a lot to tell actually. We need improvement to combine the different resolution, the different format of the data. As I told you, we are still in the process of uh, uh, get uh, accurate, uh, accurate information uh, and provide a true accuracy assessment of uh, the integration or the integration of all the data. But so, this is the way I would say. Okay, and uh, so I hope that uh, I suggest you something. Um, Useful. Thank you very much, Alessandra. Um, it was really um, beautiful, beautiful slide, beautiful presentation. I I will need to um, short down a little bit the questions because we're a little bit over time. Some of the Sorry. students had to leave. No, no problem, no problem. It was really interesting. But we do have some questions. Um, I will read them from the chat. Uh, Lucy is asking if is it uh, possible to monitor the extent of the coral reef bleaching using remote sensing? Yes, absolutely. Yes, this is one of the main applications. There are many information uh, in literature. If you look at the uh, name that I reported, uh, especially Perkins, 2018, within this publication, you find a lot of information on how and other papers on how you can use remote satellite sensing to detect bleaching and other issue, environmental issue for coral reefs. Great. Um, Lucy, do you have more questions? I can say yes or no. I saw two questions in the chat. Is it possible to monitor the yeah. extent? Ah, okay. What is the strength of this technique in distinguish between coral and algae consider the spectral similarity? This is a, a, a good point. Uh, the scientific community is working on that. I'm actually not an expert in uh, um, satellite remote sensing. I mean, in uh, observe and analyze the spectral uh, signature of images. So. I do not want to give you the wrong answer, but I know that it is challenging. 
and there is a scientific community working on this uh, topic. Okay, great. Do anybody else has uh, questions? Okay, perhaps in class, Abdelaziz? No questions. No questions. Okay. Okay, yeah, actually I see them leaving because they have, they do have uh, another lesson. Sorry um, to talk a lot of time. I hope no, that no, you no, was, enjoyed it. It was, it was a really excellent. Um, well, uh, Alessandra, thank you very much. Thank and you, Nicolas. I hope to see you. Keep in, in contact and- Absolutely, let absolutely. Me know. Let me know if you, you will meet the AG with you. Yes, absolutely. In April, okay. Absolutely. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a bye, good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.